Hi, my name is Steve James. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 423, Edify One Another. In this episode, God admonishes us to edify one another and comfort one another. We are to have a good word for each other so that we can build up and help each other to a more worthy endeavor. God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today's teaching I entitled, Edify One Another. I was looking at the word and reading sections of the word this week on exhortation or to exalt. But I chose the title a little differently in edifying, because that's what the word means. That word exhortation or exhort, exhortation, exhorteth, exalt, in the Bible it's used 30 times from the book of Acts on, and one time in the book of Luke, and nothing in the Old Testament. It's interesting as we look at this, and I just want to look at God's Word and see what it says. Theme verse, or the headlight verse, is in 1 Timothy chapter 4. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 8. And it says, For bodily exerciseth profiteth little. Doesn't say it profiteth much, but it says it profits a little. It's good to, to keep our bodies under control. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Big difference between little and all things. Having the promise of the life that now is. Godliness is to, is to tap into the promises of life that are now is, and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. In our lives, we, we, we labor and we suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. See, God's the Savior of all men. God wants all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. The way to tap into it is especially for those that believe. These things command and teach let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in the love of God, in manifestations, in spirit of scratch, in faith or believing, and in purity. And this is the verse that is the if there was a theme for the teaching, it's this verse. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. This is like a sandwich. The outside <laughs> is give attention to reading. I'm sure it's the reading of God's word. And in the middle, exhortation, edifying, building up one another. That's what we're called to do. And doctrine. And doctrine is right believing. The right way to believe. We get the right way of believing from the Word of God. Read the Word of God. We see what's available to us. The promises and that we have now and that's to come. Let's go to Romans, and we'll look a little more at this. Romans chapter 12. You know something? In the world and in life, there are people that think they're pretty good at uh, discerning and seeing faults. They can find faults pretty quickly. They'll point them out to you at times. 
But I don't see that in the word that we're to do that, to point out their faults. We're to encourage them. That's what it says. And here in Romans chapter 12, I want to start in verse 6. Having then, then gifts, and the word gifts here is taught, is kairos is modern, it's ways of serving. It's serving. Having then ways of serving or service differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophesy, let us prophesy according to the portion of believing. Believing. Or ministering, let us wait on ministering. Or he that teaches on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. See how prominent that exhortation is here. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. In other words, if you're a person that is in the body of Christ, to ruleth, to make sure things happen, to be on top of the details, do it with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. When believers see one another, this is how they're to act with one another. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Mm -hmm. Verse 11, not slothful in business. In other words, you got a job to do, you do it well. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, always doing it because that's what the Lord wants. It's the will of God, and we're doing the will of God. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Tribulation, mental pressure. We're patient in that. Continuing, instant in prayer, quick to pray. Distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. That's what we're called to do. What does it mean to be hospitable? When people come here, I say, come on in. But we're hospitable. Come on in. What do you need? You need something to eat or drink. Whatever it is to be hospitable. That's what believers do. Bless them which persecute you. Now, that's kind of hard to do sometimes. But it's, that's what it says to do. And curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. That means in your own intelligence. You know, I'm pretty smart. I know how to, you know, that's not it. It's like the thing, we don't want to be at the front of the table, Jesus Christ. If start at the back, let them bring you up front if they want to. We're humble. We're not going, well, look how smart I am. And I'll tell you what I've noticed about smarts. There's not a big, giant gap in smarts. You know what I mean? That's what people think. They go, oh, this guy is so smart. He's a doctor or a lawyer or something. You know what I mean? And someone who's working, collecting the trash or something. You know, There's not a big, giant gap. What makes the difference is concern, interest, and need. And maybe advantages to do it, too. But that's it. They have, they have a desire to be something, and they study and learn how to do it. Why are some people jet pilots work? Their job and their profession is to fly planes off aircraft carriers because they have an interest. They learned how to do it. And it's not everybody can do it because they don't have the training. But the, the intellect between people isn't as big as the world would want you to know. We're, we look at everybody like we're the same. We don't go, oh, that guy's great and this guy's not great. Especially if we're believers. Every believer is great. 
Verse 17 says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. We're called to live peaceably with all men as much as possible. Some people don't want to do that, and so you can't. But you want to. You'd like to. Dearly beloved, arrange not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. See, we just give it to God. We just give it to God. God will take care of your needs. No matter how big you might get ripped off, God can cover. God can take care of you. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. You'll warm him. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Always having that good word for somebody. Look at Luke. We'll look at the, the only one in the Gospels. Luke chapter 3. What I'm teaching here, I believe, is the inner part of the word. The, the reading and the doctrine. The inner part. Like the meat of what we're, how we're to act towards one another whenever possible and in luke 3 and we're going to start in 16 and this is john the baptist john answered saying unto them all i indeed baptize you with water but one mightier than i cometh the latch of whose shoes i am not worthy to unloose he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, red hot fire, whose fan is in his hand. He's got a fan in his hand. That fan is to, to blow wind, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat unto the gardener. The wheat is the good pot, right? The good. But the chaff he will burn with fire, unquenchable. That's what Jesus Christ is going to do. Unquenchable. And many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. To build them up. To say, hey, this is what it is. We know that there's three different categories of people in the Bible. Jew, Gentile, Church of God. But in life, you will see as we go through this teaching, there's really two groups of people. You know what they are? Believers and unbelievers. It matters not where you sit, what group you're in. When I say sit, in other words, who you follow. It matters what you believe. That's it. Go to Acts chapter 13. Acts 13, and we're going to start in verse 14. It says, But when they departed from Perga, they came unto Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, this is Paul and Silas. We've read this record not too long ago. Saying, ye men and brethren, if you have any words of exhortation for the people, say on. You know, lots of times after fellowship, I go, does anyone have anything to share? And what I'm after, and I've said this before, is I'm, I, if you got more to add, I, I want to hear it. We all do, so that we can all learn and grow. Do you have any words of exhortation for the people? Say on. And Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand and said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. And he starts to teach them 
a history lesson of what happened throughout the Old Testament. He tells them about Moses and David and all these people who believed in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at verse 26. I want to move down to 26. And he's continuing with this history lesson. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voice of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him, or condemning, and they're just talking about Jesus Christ. They condemned him, even though he was read every week in, the, in their synagogue. So it doesn't matter where you sit. It matters where you believe and what you believe every time. You're either a believer or an unbeliever. And I don't care where you sit. Get down to 29. It says, and he's teaching them all about Jesus Christ and what he's doing. And in verse 39 is where I want to. 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. Important to believe. Not how much word you hear, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Just from hearing it. Beware, therefore, least that which that come unto you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers and wanderers and perish. For I work a work in your in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. One of the things you want to do is you want to be in front of someone who's teaching the accuracy of God's word. That's important too. Remember, it's reading, then exhorting one another, and doctrine. And then... It's the believing of it. Verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So the Gentiles wanted to hear more of these words. They thought, you know, I'm going to want to learn more so I can believe. Now when the congregation was broke up, many of the Jews and the Religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. That's what Paul and Barnabas stay with the grace of God. And what you got to see here, it's important, is there's two groups of Judeans. There's these Judeans that wanted to hear more, and the proselytes. And Paul says, continue in the grace of God. Verse 44 says, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city to hear the word of God, the doctrine. But when the Jews saw that the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. So just because they heard the word, just because they were Judeans, didn't profit them any. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you. But seeing ye put it away from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we'll go on to the Gentiles. See you later. See you later. Wherever you go, wherever believers meet, if the word's being taught there, that's a good thing. But it's got to be mixed with believing. It has to be. If you don't believe it, what good does it do you? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 
Verse one, I'm just going to read a little here. It says, for yourselves, brethren, no are entering in unto you. This entering in unto you was just like we could have read in Acts chapter 13. Paul goes to the synagogue and he preaches Christ unto them. He did it in wherever he went. He did it in Thessalonica. He did it in Berea. He did it in Philippi. He did it everywhere. This is our entering that it was not in vain. Verse 2 says, but even after that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know. You know our entering. You know how what happened in Philippi. That's when they beat him, threw him in prison, and the jailer got saved. We were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. It wasn't easy, but we're going to do it. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor of guile. When they taught the word and they exhorted them, it was not of deceit, nor uncleanness, nor of guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. Not as pleasing men. They didn't want to please men but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time use we flattering words. That means to butter them up. Blow smoke up their butt, someone might say. I wouldn't. Well, I, well that's what it means, butter them up. As ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, not even of you gods. Whenever I am asked to teach or invited to teach or people come here, I'm going to teach the word. And that's it. I never care if anyone likes it or not. I don't. I hope they do. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just going to teach the word that I see in the place. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just, I'm just reading it to you. Nor of men saw. I don't want any glory. I want the God to get the glory. Neither of you nor yet of others. This means other groups. I care what all the other groups think about what I'm doing. No, I don't care. When we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ, he was an apostle. Jesus Christ made him an apostle on the road to Damascus. Says so clearly. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse, and this is a nursing mother, cherishes her children. So being effectually desirous of you, we were willing to impart unto you not the gospel only, but I'll say mostly, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. Thessalonica is called the model church. That's how we're to act towards one another. We care about one another. Verse 9 says, For ye remember, and brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. Night and day, whenever they could, they did it. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holy and justly and unblameably, we behaved ourselves among you that what? The unbelievers. No, the believers. Two groups of people. Believers and unbelievers. Am I right? I think so. What about the lukewarm? They're unbelievers. I'll help you. Eleven. As ye know how we exhorted, once again exhorted, and comfort and charged every one of you as a father does his children. You know, part of in the word for exhort exhorting is calling aside and putting your arm around them, like a father with his son. And the father may say, son, you're a young man now. Act like it. 
That's what my dad said to me. You're not a child anymore. You're not an adolescent. You're not a child, a teenager. You're a man. Act like. Sometimes we have to act like men and women. Verse 12 says, that ye would walk worthy of God. We give him a more worthy endeavor. Who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that are lukewarm. No. Well, if you sit at the right place, no. you're under the right leader. No. All no. right, you guys win. Let's go to chapter five and read some more. We're going to finish off here in chapter five. Verse one, but of the times and of the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. See, they know that, that it's not going to be warned. He's just going to come. A thief never tells you when he's coming. For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child. When a woman is ready to have a child, it's, that's when it happens. That's when it happens. And they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. That, de that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor in darkness. At night and in darkness, when people do things slyly under the table. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. We do that by studying the word, keeping God first in our lives, and noticing what's going on. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of believing and love. And that word love is agape. For an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. The word salvation here is wholeness by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Whether we have fallen asleep or we're still awake, the end result is that we're going to live together with him. Therefore, comfort yourselves together. See, we edify one another. We comfort ourselves together and edify one another. And that's why I changed the teaching title. We are to edify one another. One of the things I really like about this fellowship is that we do that even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. This is talking about the people who serve you that way. We have God's word so we can follow it and we can see those who labor among us and follow. It says, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, not for anything else, not for honor, extra honor, for their work's sake. They've helped us. They, they call us aside. They teach us the word. They build us up. We thank them for that. And be at peace amongst yourselves. Now we exhort you once again, brethren, warn them that are unruly, support the Feeble is uh, disorderly, feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all. See that none render evil through evil unto any, but ever follow that which is good, both 
amongst yourselves and to all. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil to the best of our ability. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body, soul, and spirit, all of it. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. God will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all holy brethren. Everybody should know what's written here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.